In this video I will give an absolutely unique instruction on how to make a roof using the old German slating technique, with an emphasis on the old look which today few people even do in Germany. By following this instruction, you will understand all the key points that you need to cover a simple roof or facade. Make a special beautiful roof yourself, and I will help you with this, you can count on my support online, on any issues, from the selection and calculation of materials, to individual solutions for your specific project, I will be happy to help you make a beautiful roof remotely, feel free to write to me. My name is Andrew McKinia, I am a practicing roofer from Ukraine. And I have checked everything that I will tell you here many times in practice. All video materials presented in this video are my commercial works made according to the same rules that I show here. I want to apologize in advance for possible translation errors, I do not speak English well, and I use neural networks so that you can understand me, and thereby make beautiful and reliable roofs more accessible to a wide audience around the world. I strongly recommend not just to look, but to make a small rectangular training stand of any size and do it with me. This will allow you to experience everything with your own hands. As a result, you will get such a roof surface. This at first glance complex technique can be divided into three simple stages. Making blanks, marking the surface and placing the blanks on the surface. Three simple steps that will allow you to master the old German slating right in your workshop. If you master these three simple steps, you will be able to make such a picture from a rectangular slate. And this is how it will look from slate. So, we outline our training surface and below it I will show three types of blanks, which will consist of the entire surface of a regular roof. So the number one workpiece is Dextein, blank number two, Anfang Ort, blank number three, Doppelt End Ort. We are now talking about a simple roof surface, without valleys and dormers. If there are dormers, valleys or chimneys, another type of blanks is added, in German it is called Kalistein, but we will study this a little later. These are the three types of blanks you will need to completely cover an ordinary roof, regardless of size. You just make such blanks and do not think about anything else for now. Let's see how to make each of these blanks separately. Dech time first. We order a lot of slate for the roof of one format, from which we will produce all slate blanks. The 40 by 25 cm or 16 by 10 inch format is very suitable. If it is smaller, it will look better but it will be more work for you, if it is larger. The scale will be broken in relation to Kalishteins in valleys, believe me 40 by 25 is the optimal format. We make two Dextines from one rectangular slate. In old German slating, the width of the Dextines must vary, and that is why we make three sizes of Dextines. One we divide the stone in half and get two identical Dextines. And we divide the stone into two slightly different parts, shifting the line by 1.5 to 2 cm from the center. We make dex tines with a sharp cut, that's why we cut at an angle of 65 degrees. We first mark the overlapping line of 30% of the total height of the stone. Round this corner, and this corner. And from this point, we draw a harmonious Rukan line of Dextein. The very shape of the Dextein gives us the size of the side overlap. If you still have questions about the form of Dextein, go to our YouTube channel, there is a video about it. Watch it and it will cover all the gaps, but for now it is quite simple for you to do as I have drawn. Approximately. There is no need to adhere to high accuracy, the stones can and should differ from each other, because this is old German slating. With a broken line, I show the chipping edge of the stone, where I do not draw this chipping, it should be in the opposite direction. This ensures the best waterproofing of the coating. Chipping edge pulls water. In the overlapping area, we punch three holes for nails. Each stone is nailed with at least three nails. Here I deliberately show where it is not necessary to punch, because there will be an overlap of the previous stone. So we produce a certain amount of these stones. On a real roof you can put two people and they can do it at once while others are preparing the roof. We also have to reduce the height of the stone, on a real roof, you immediately cut the stone to the height from above, and only after that do you punch the holes. For example, start with a stone 25 cm high, then 24.5 cm, then 24, then 23.5, and so on. Watch how the height of the row changes and maintain an overlap of 30% of the height of the stone. It is necessary to sort the stones by height, and stack them separately by height from each other. 
We made the blanks for the dex tines, we are moving on to the Anfang Ort blanks. We make the blank for the special beginning of the row from the same slate format. If we made dex tines with a sharp cut, then we make Anfang Ort in the same way with a sharp cut of 65 degrees. If you chose a normal cut, then this blank should match it, it's simple. This is the Foos zone, here we leave a little more than the Foos zone of dex tine, about 5 to 6 inches. And from this point we smoothly draw such a stretched line. Imagine that they stretch the dex tine to the entire width of the stone. In the Foos zone, we cut a little like this. With this, we ensure the lifting of the stone upwards. One centimeter or half inch is enough. We also round off this part. When you put the blank in place, you may need to cut a little more, lay it so that the stone lies tightly. But while this is a blank, we make it so that there is room for maneuver. When you install this stone, you may need to cut it like this, that's normal. Here we will have an overlap line approximately like this, in this place you can punch holes. We process this part by chipping upwards. We chip the rest of the stone downwards. You apply this blank to the beginning of the row, you must try to keep it as long as possible. Mark the line of the border of the roof and finish this part. Roughly, the stone will fit, but you should complete Rukan line so that it looks harmonious. But before that, it is necessary to cover up all the previous spaces of the slate with Stischstein and, if necessary, Zwischenstein. This is how it will look on the roof, but more on that later. So, we dealt with the blanks for the beginning of the row. Now we move on to the last workpiece, the double end of the row. We will immediately study the most creative ways for you to be immediately satisfied with the expressiveness of your work. We will also make this blank from the same format. Meet, this is my brother Mike, we do all this together, but he's behind the scenes all the time. Here is the stone, we have always run this line from here. From here? Yeah bro, right here. Here you are cutting here, trying to make this blank as long as possible, along the diagonal of the rectangle. And you round this part like this, try to immediately make the template smoothly, like an egg at an angle. But also don't focus too much on this, do everything by hand, without patterns, templates, and compasses, this is the main feature. Manual work is precisely your visual inaccuracies that will form your personal handwriting. Don't chase after perfect shapes, it won't look cool. Do everything by hand. As it was done in ancient times. You can put such blanks on the roof and see how to finish them. Here, in yellow, I showed how exactly this blank should be finished on the roof. To make such blanks as efficiently as possible, experiment, you can break it into stages, for example, first roughly cut this part and that part with a guillotine, and then finish it with a hammer. Optimize and try different ways to analyze the result. Step number two, surface marking. If you just watch it will not be very effective, so I highly recommend repeating it in practice. Therefore, make yourself a small training stand of any size, at least 1 meter high and 1 meter wide. Make the marking so that your initial row is 15 centimeters, and the final row is 10 centimeters. Regardless of the size of the stand distributed the rows so that they gradually decrease. Decrease every row or every two rows depending on the size of your stand. I have a small area and I will decrease each row by 1 centimeter. So 15. 14. 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. And the ridge row is 11 centimeters. Now I will show an example of another area. In general, the size of the surface does not matter. It is important that you have a change in the height of the rows from larger to smaller and that it is visually visible. The smaller the stone, the more expressive the look. How to determine the angle of inclination of the rows? We draw a segment of a circle and from the center we mark the angle of the roof. From the point of intersection of this angle and the segment we draw a horizontal line like this, and a vertical line like this. We connect this point and this point with a straight line. This is our first line. From here we mark. These will be the highest rows on the roof. Now we mark upwards little by little reducing each row or after several rows so that the last row is 10 centimeters. These numbers are relative and you can do 12 and 14 at the end. But it is important that this principle is preserved and the more expressive it is, the cooler it is. For example, on a large area, we start with 18 cm and end with 10 cm. With gradation every 10 rows. This is your space for creativity, but the consumption of material and time and the price for the client depend on it. 
We figured out the markup, now let's move on to the last, most important step. This step must be shown to each member of the team who will perform the roof together with you. It will make your life a lot easier because I know how much time it takes to train employees in the process. So, step 3, laying slate. First, we will find out where it is better for us to place the Gabindia Stein. And we start from here. For many Fus Gabindia seems something incomprehensible, but if you look at this row, you can see that it is an ordinary horizontal row, in which the stones go like stairs. Tall stone, medium stone, small stone. Then we repeat. To determine the Gabindia Stein, we must apply the Dextein to the drip and to the inclined row, so that their Buchen lines cross on the overlapping line. We add the necessary overlap and make it from a whole stone. We nail it with three nails above the overlap line. These stones that are located between the Gabindia Steins, they can be of different widths and there can be one, two or three of them. It is arbitrary. It is only important to withstand the overlapping of the rows by 30% of the height of the row, and to pay attention to the fact that the stones fit tightly to each other. For this, always look one step ahead, think about how the Dextines lie. We approached our first Anfang Ort. Look, there is a main rule in Old German slating, each row begins and ends in a special way. And now I will show you how to make the beginning of the row beautifully and expressively. Anfang Ort. We try to make it as long as possible, within the limits of our stone 16 by 10 inches. Ideally its length should be equal to the width of three Dextines. Before showing how to do it, I want to show how not to do it. Most of those whom I trained on my projects always did the same thing. They see the overlap line and try to overlap it as much as possible. Therefore, they keep a straight line and make a small rounding. And we are pulling the last stone from here. Most roofers make a small rounding and draw a straight line. I won't say it's a bug, but it doesn't look very good. If you are studying the old German slating, I think you want to achieve an impressive result. So we have to do it differently. And now I will show you how. So now I will show you how to make Anfang ought expressively and harmoniously. We do not start the rounding here in the very corner, but drag it from this point to this point, without leaving a straight section of the line at all. And we make Stisch Steins of this shape. We nail it here. It fits tightly and everything is fine. The next stone, we have to make it here. And on this side, we mark the height, the same as on the previous stone plus a margin of 1 to 2 centimeters. And cut the stone with a smooth arc so that the pattern is harmonious. Here we also cut it and nail it with 3 nails. And the last stone, we start here. We attach our workpiece Anfang Ort and see where it needs to be finished. This is our beginning of the row, which consists of 3 stones. In some cases, it can consist of two stones. You see, we create a picture so that these lines diverge harmoniously from one line. We try to make sure that these lines do not differ from each other. So that they unfold naturally from one laziness. We also try to stretch these lines as long as possible. So we nail this stone and see what we have next. We have to tighten our row endings. Before laying the double end of the row, we make a nail a Stichstein to plug this space, and the coating was tight. We make it from leftovers, it is small. Then we place the Dextein in the middle of the Fuskabindia Stein to avoid overlapping for stones in one place. And we apply the workpiece for the double end of the row. We saw exactly where it is necessary to cut and finish, finished and nailed. It will take a long time at first, but after 5 to 10 repetitions, you will learn how to do it the first time. The second stone is the same. You can also put a Stichstein under it, it will improve the density of the coating and it looks cool, but it is not necessary. Let's look in more detail. In order for you to understand better, I will first show a simpler version, the usual double ending. If you are doing this for the first time, attach an ordinary Dextein to see this side overlap. After that, you take the blank for the usual double ending, we did not look at it, but here everything is simply a rectangle with a height equal to the height of the visible part of the row. Draw a line, I recommend not leaving this corner, just round it, it looks better that way. This part is lifted here. Round this part. Lift it up. Do Wasrabwai send a heap. Just cut the corner. And cut this corner to the middle of the row. Here in the upper part, we nail at least four nails. 
the second stone similarly, but in this place you push it forward a little. Visually imagine the middle of the row. Round this part in the same way. And here you would stand the same overlap as on the entire row. And again the Wasrabwai sender heeb. We nail with at least four nails, because additional wind load acts on these stones. This is a common double ending, which is now widely taught in all educational centers in Germany. It looks good, if done correctly, and do not leave this corner. But this is a fairly typical option. You and I are here to learn how to do not just normal, but impressive. Therefore, right now I will show how to do it very nicely and clearly. We cover this space with a stich time. We nail it. We see that we again have a space that needs to be closed. We also visually divide the row in half and attach the workpiece that we made earlier. We pull the end part as high as possible. We hold this line as an arc, leaving no straight sections. So that it was curved along its entire length. And the upper border of this stone looks like this. And the next stone, we again move it a little forward, from the line of the usual time, And we lead this line smoothly rounding to the very top. In this case, we can't do a Wasrabwai sender heeb, it's not quite right, but that's how the old masters did it. Look, this is a book published in 1938. The author is Professor Architect Shad. These are his illustrations. I always do this on facades and roofs that are well visible from below, and there were no problems with that. But I also believe that modern rules are based on observations, therefore, decide for yourself what to do on your projects. I will add that this is exactly how it was done in ancient times, and now we are talking about old German slating. With its advantages and disadvantages. Write your thoughts about it in the comments. Let's mark two Dechsteins and repeat again. From the bottom of this stone, we raise a little upwards, we already set this rise. And according to the old tradition, we nail the Stichsteins, cover this space. We take the blank, apply it, see where it needs to be cut, finish it and nail it. And we lay the next stone. You see that these stones are narrowed at the end. Try to narrow them equally, but remember that all this must be done by eye, without rulers and compasses. And we go further and make regular Dechsteins. While we are at the very bottom of our surface, we use the widest and largest Dechsteins. Since this is an educational video, I will not cut what I have already shown, watch it again and think about this principle. We do it from these blanks, you see, in this case you need to cut this part more. We make these lines a smooth arc, harmoniously. And nail it. Now we put Dechstein and begin to reduce their width, overlapping some wide stones with two narrow ones. We have a very small area here, so I cover each stone with two, but on a real roof it has to be done a little at a time, locally. I mark the boundaries of the stone so that you can see the overlapping. Here, on top of the double ending, we will put three deck stones. We must also reduce the double ending, going from the bottom up. Let's nail the Stichstein here. And the double ending of the row. Now we start a new row. Each new row begins with Anfang Ort. We see the extreme points for Stichstein. We take a stone, Stichstein can almost always be made from Dechstein, try it and you will see. We do not round the line only at the very beginning, but extend the arc from the very beginning to the end in a smooth arc. We nail the Stichsteins of this shape. The next stone is a Zwischenstein, we pull it from here, through this point here. We narrow evenly. We stretch the arc all the way here. Here we raise the stone higher and nail it. Next, we look at this height and try to make approximately the same height on the next stone. And from this point, we again equally narrow these areas. And we are already reaching for this stone. This whole line also goes in an arc with us, without straight sections. This is our Orchstein. We nail it in this way, and lay ordinary Dechsteins. Now I will mark in red what not to do, but almost everyone does this on the first attempts. This is probably due to the desire to follow the overlap line. Don't make such small roundings here. It doesn't look good. Try to stretch this rounding as wide as possible. By the way, in this way you will divert the flow of water from the edge. Do you know how capillary water flows down a slate? It always breaks off at the lowest point. 
This way you drain the water away from the edge. And this is very useful, for example, on the ridge. And we continue. We nail a row of deck tines. And we begin to raise the double ending, which smoothly flows into the ridge row. The first stone and the second stone. We start a new row again. We make and nail the stish stein. We make it from deck stein lying down. And the next stone is on farm stein. And we kneel a row of deck steins. I mark the boundaries of the last deck stein. And we nail the stones of the double end of the row. The first stone and the second stone. They smoothly transferred us to the ridge row. I really like how it looks. And I always do this on the facade. And we start a new row. We put an additional stish stein, so we will make our arm farm ought not from two, but from three petals. It looks better that way. Now Zwischenstein and Ortstein. And again we nail a row of Dechsteins. Here we still nail the whole Dechstein, and in this place we apply the Dechstein, and where its Rukan line intersects with the line of the ridge row, we cut at an angle inward. We leave such a tail so that it rests on the roof and the front part does not rise. Let's take a look at how to finish covering the surface and fit the slate under the ridge row. The whole dextine lies like this, but we have to make room for the ridge row so that it fits tightly, so from the point of intersection of the dextine with the line of the ridge, we cut off the excess part. And nail it in this place. The next stone. From this point, we cut off the excess. Apply any ruler and transfer the line of the horse to the stacked stones. The next row of dextines. When the dextine intersects with the line of the ridge, we cut its front part inward. In this place where it makes no sense to lay a small corner, we simply round off the previous stone. In this place we also round off the previous stone. This stone is already overlapped by a ridge row. We transfer the line of the ridge row to the stacked stones. In this way, we made room for the ridge row and it will lie very nicely and tightly. Remember this technique, it will be suitable not only on the ridge row, but also on more complex elements, such as dormers or chimneys, in all cases where the rows are intertwined at different angles, but that will come later. And we go further, and again make on farm ought. You see, I also reduce their width. All key things should always be scaled down from bottom to top. Try not to allow, on the contrary, an increase. And again we nail a row of dex tines. We have come to the ridge line and are cutting the corner, as you already know. And this is already the last Anfang Ort. We nail the Stich Stein. Ort Stein. And we nail the dex tines. Cut off the excess under the ridge. And that's it, now we are ready to nail the ridge row. We will also make a smooth transition from on farm or to ridge row. Oh, I forgot about the Uberstand here. The slate overhangs the surface. I am correcting. Here we make an arc similar to on farm or arcs. And all other stones are kept in the same context. That is, we use narrow stones. We make the next stone like this. You see, it covers this space completely, rests against the deck and leaves no gaps. If you are on the roof, and you make a ridge row from ordinary deck tines, see how to do it. Here, look, we have to avoid overlapping in one point. That is, here you need to pull the stone further, then there will not be a big gap. We finish here. And further on the same principle. And we continue on our stand made of narrow stones, but the principle is the same. We have already reached the cap stone. Do it also harmoniously. I like to make it voluminous with several layers of slate. 
This is how we made a beautiful surface from rectangular slate. But the old German slating is especially interesting for its smooth valleys, dormers, and beautiful slate chimneys. This is what creates that special vibe of an old German roof. This is the next level of difficulty. Once you learn how to make a flat surface, you will be ready to move on to the next level. And of course I will teach you to do it in a special way, not schematically. Without precise linear markings, as most roofers do now, but with arbitrary shapes of stones, based not on the marking scheme, but on the material in your heart, exactly as they did before. Right now I am preparing two things for you, this is a complete video instruction for the roofers who will be doing the work on your roof. You will get an old German roof with all the complex elements including valleys, chimneys, and dormers. And the second, individual support. I want to give you a concrete result, an old German roof on your house. I will make your roof remotely. I will help with the selection of slate and accurately calculate its quantity specifically for your project. Competently complete your roof with related materials so that it works reliably for a long time and does not bring problems. I will be in touch with you throughout the duration of the work, from start to finish. Make an exclusively and reliable roof with me, follow the link below this video right now. Sincerely, your online partner for exclusive slate roofs Andrew McKinnia.